But because we film today, we're going to take and pay homage as we rightfully should and ought to. I'll give you something out of the Word of God. He says, God be merciful unto us. Bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. See. And he has. And I, for one, want God to continue blessing us and that his face to shine upon us. So if you would, let's pray. Dear Lord, as we bow before you as we come to the throne, we thank you for the privilege. Help us today not to take it lightly. Just as another day, no sir, not another day at all. But a day that you glorified yourself by blessing us, giving us the opportunity. And now, Lord, I pray that we will praise you in the process. But there's a responsibility that goes with it. Because we have been given great liberty, freedom. It must be defended. It must be cherished. And it must be passed on. Now, Lord, help us to do our part. Thank you for this beautiful, glorious day. And we praise you, we glorify you. And we say thank you, Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you would all stand. Did you?
finally open today, how about you?
Good morning. Good morning. If you would, please stand with me. Page 438. <laughs>
person that the course or two, something like that. Well, I would have, you know, I think. Hey, Pat, what's that prayer like in the You really want to know. Yeah. He put you up at the uh, better than you really want to know. Do you really want to know? I think so. He did look good, but I don't care. A lot of times when people talk about the flag and they wonder, well, really, what does it represent? What does it really mean? The sad truth is that they don't know what it means. It's very important for us to understand what it means. So, yeah, come on up here. That's fine. All the kids. Up to the floor. Let's get, let's, let's get close to it. Now, this right here, this yellow right here, all that means, that right there, that is a... Uh, I'm going to blame Hold on, hold on. They say it's age. Never mind. That is about ceremonial. That's the ceremonial flag. But putting that aside, that's not the representation of this. The representation of this, it starts with red stripes. See the red stripes right there? Every flag has red stripes. So it's like that. It starts out like that. Got the exact same amount of numbers. Red stripes. Versus white stripes. Now, can you tell me how many red stripes it's got on that flag? <coughs> you all know. How many, how many, how many red stripes? Tell me, bitch. Count them. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is the number for God. That's God's number. It's a perfect number. It's the number of completion. You know how many days of the week you got? Seven. Seven days of the week. Seven red stripes on that flag represents God, His blood. Blood, red. Okay? Blood is red. And what did God do? He shed His blood for us. Amen. Now, right next to that red stripe is a white stripe. How many white stripes do we have in the vision? Six. There's always six white stripes on the flag. Always. And the reason is, that represents us. Six is the number for man. And understanding, in order for man to get white, he's got to go through the red stripe, the blood. Become white. It smells, the Bible says. Six, number of man. There's 13 on here, which they talk about as a representation of the 13 original colonies. Now you have on this flag, you have blue. And blue is the representation of the domain of God. Every time you look at a place in the sky, you're looking towards heaven. You're looking towards God. Well, there's no blue stripes. It's one big solid mass of blue. But there's a lot of white stars on there. Well, how many white stars, how many stars do we have on there? No, there's more than that. There's more than that. There's 50. Representation of the United States of America. These are white stars. That is us in the domain of God. And whether people understand this or understand or realize this or not, this is as much a Christian flag as it is anything. Yeah. Because it does it does connect us to our Savior. Yes. You see, those blood stripes were His. Those white stripes were us after we've been through Him. And then the blue, God's domain. And then the white stripe or white stars for us in God's domain. Mm -hmm. So there you go. But that's not the end of the story. Let me give you something else. Let me tell you about what people that came before us, what they valued, and how they put a great emphasis upon that flag. Because they understood what it meant. A lot of people don't understand how we got our uh, national anthem. A lot of people don't realize the value and the importance of that. Now, everybody knows 1776, uh, you know, July 4th, that is our Independence Day, we celebrate that. But many years later, the conflict was not over. Matter of fact, how many of y'all remember from your history books the War of 1812? Mm -hmm. Now, the War of 1812 went on for a few years. 
And the period of time that I'm talking about is in 1814. September, as a matter of fact. And what took place over about a 25-hour period was that Great Britain determined they were going to bring our flag down. They were going to take and show us, us little peasants like we were, that we still had to take and pay homage to them. They then took Washington, D.C. and made it rubble. And they turned their attention on Baltimore. Matter of fact, Washington, D.C. and Baltimore were the two ports that were the main ports of the country at that point in time. Then it took one, and they were coming after the other. And there at Fort McHenry, they were fortified, they were in their bunkers, they, they knew that the fight was coming to them. And in the process of this deal, you had some people that were so determined, like the old saying is, give me liberty or give me death. One thing that was stated about the United States Christian, George Washington said this, what separates him different than all others in the world is that the U.S. Christian, the United States Christian, would rather die on his feet than live on his knees. Amen. So here we are. We're in a great battle. And they're getting ready to come and attack Baltimore. But before it happens, they had already uh, set up this meeting between Francis Scott Key and some others to argue, or should I say, they, they, they were trying to plead the case of freeing uh, uh, free, uh, uh, prisoners. And in the process of that, the British agreed, and they came out there in a little rowboat to where they were. And when they got out there, the admiral said, hey, we're going to honor this, we're going to do this, but there's a real problem. He said, by in the morning, it ain't going to matter. He said, I've got my whole armada that's coming in. You look on that horizon out there, and he did, and he said it was filled with ships, as far as the eye could see. He said, they'll be here in a little while. And he says, I've already told them to turn their guns on that little fort down there. And by the morning, they'll surrender. They'll give over. And he says, you know, we will honor the prisoner swap like we said, but you can't go back to your people until it's over with. So in all honesty, Francis, Francis Scott Key was actually a prisoner himself. He goes down below on the bottom side of the ship and he's seen something that was very horrific. His people were all in chains and in cages in the bottom side of that ship. Those prisoners that they had. And he was begging and pleading for their lives. Well, they got there and they began to fire. They were hitting that fort, but they didn't surrender. Ever so often as he seen the light would flash in the sky, look to see if the flag was still there. The boys down below, they're hollering and say, hey, is the flag still there? As the night wore on down, Francis Scott Key says, yes, it's still there. The morning was coming around and it was the last mad push of the British bring that flag down. Now let me tell you the size of the flag. You see the story that took place before this happened. The general of the fort back in 1813 went to a lady and got her to sew her, her group to sew a big old flag. 20 by 42. 20 by 42 feet. And they sewed it. Now that was the big flag. That's the one, Brother John, that was without weather. Because they knew that if it was to get wet, because it was out of cotton, made out of cotton and everything, they knew that if it was to get wet, it would probably snap that flag pole. So what they did is they had that one, and they had this other flag. And this is probably the one that took place on that flag pole at Fort McHenry, the day when the British was firing at them. And that flag was 17 feet by 25 feet. 
And as they fired and they fired and they fired and they fired, they were going to bring the flag off that pole. Morning broke. Daylight and smoke began to lift. The men down below on the ship said, is it still there? As I looked across the horizon at the rampart. On top of the rampart, the flag stood slightly at angle a little bit, but was still flying. It had it and more. They released Francis Scott Key and let him go ashore. He went there to the ford, and as he made his way up to the rampart, he began to understand why that flag was still there. They understood the value and the importance of that flag to keep flying because it represents freedom, yes. liberty. Yes. Why we're here today. Yes. And they understood the value of that, that each man, when that flag began to start to fall, they would run over grab that flag and hold it in place. That's right. Know that they were about to die. They would remove that guy and the next guy would go and stand in place and hold that flag until it got to the point Brother John, they couldn't remove guys anymore. So what Francis Scott Key said he saw that morning was these dead bodies all laying up around the bottom of that flag. But it still stood. Yeah. Later they raised that other flag, the 20 by 42 flag, to let the British know we're not giving in. Yeah. Right. We're not surrendering. Yes. After that little battle right there, oh, there's a few little more squirmishes, but that was the turning of the tide. They're right there. They're cocky. They took Washington. We're going to get Baltimore too. Nah, nah, last year, it is still flying, and it still needs to continue to keep flying, because your children, your grandchildren, needed to fly. They say in the world that if freedom fails in the United States of America, there is no world. Yes, right. Amen. There's been many of you in here this morning that have stood in defense of this flag. Let me show you something you can help me with this morning. The other day, you helped in my pension. I had noticed to my own shame. I had noticed that our flag had gotten tattered. Brother Alex called up here and said, hey, the flag's tattered. Y'all gonna change it out. I go out there and take a look, and sure enough, it's tattered. Let me teach you flag etiquette. Something you ought to all study and learn. You'll not catch me wearing a flag on my building. I got a, I got a flag pin. But you won't see me wearing this greatest flag of none whatsoever. And you won't see me disposing of a flag because I haven't earned that right. This flag is in representation of a soldier. Just like you and I. This flag has stood its post and put in its time. Now it's tattered. And the honorable thing and the right way that we dispose of this flag is that we take it down and never touch it to ground. Ms. Wanda went out there and helped me because it's not easy, is it, Ms. Wanda, to take and replace the flag? But we took the one down and put the other up. Then we folded it properly, as you see. You do me the honor and the favor to take that to Brother Alex. He knows what to do with that flag. When I start to ponder and think about how our flag is being disrespected, yes. abused and misused, they don't understand its values. That flag has to fly. It is a representation of freedom. Amen. Don't buy into the lies. As a matter of fact, the lies are brought about by people that don't know that flag. Right. Don't understand its value. And the lies that have been 
a designated and given for its freedom. That's right. We need to keep it flying. Yes. So when I stand up here and put my hand on my heart, never, ever, not honor me. I understand when I say I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Do we mean those words? Yes. We need to. Because that flag has done anything wrong. People under that flag might have been doing things wrong. But that flag has never done anything wrong. And it stands for where everything is right. Yes. And that's why we need to keep it flying. Did you really want it to know?
As I heard the husband say to the wife, you know, in all honesty, we're, we got the freedom today because of uh, America. Amen. Amen. For the Americans and everything, we'd be speaking Japanese today. And he was acknowledging to his kids, uh, it took the Americans to come and to free us. What a great, great thing that is. To Brother Tim, when we see that black flag, it's a, it's a representation of those that have stood for freedom and who have given freedom to those who did not have it. If you're with me this morning, Deuteronomy chapter number 19, verse number 14. Y'all with me today? Amen. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thy inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Listen carefully what he just told you about. You say, well, that's talking about my neighbor's landmarks. Love God, love neighbor. Yep. Upon those two hang all the law of commandments. Love God, love neighbor. So what God's talking about here is what's been established, you don't remove it. You don't take it away. No, hey, you honor it, you pay tribute to it. And by the way, that's not the only place in the Bible where it says it. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse number 14, go there with me. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord. The work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that set a light by his father or his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his, his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. 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 Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovered his father's skirt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast. And all the people shall say, Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that takes the reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Cursed be he that conformeth not all the words of the law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Now why did I read all of this? Because when you start removing things and changing things and denying things and announcing things, these problems arise. Get you to a place in time where they don't even know what a boy is and what a girl is. Get you to a place in time where if it feels good, do it. Hey, get you to a place in time. Whatever goes, it's okay. Not with God. Yes. Right. God's Word says it's a curse. It's a curse. And we wonder why we're going down the path that we are. Why we've got the trouble that we are. Because we've removed the old landmark. You thought it was for something else. Well, they don't want to honor the flag anymore, preacher. They're kneeling in defiance against it. Well, what are they defying? The blood of Jesus Christ. God's domain. Freedom. We're not here to be slaves. We're here to be free. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, we will be free when God makes us free. So God says it's a curse. Job 29.3. 
24, verse number 1. Why? Seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know Him not see His days? Do you not understand? God sees what's going on. God knows what's happening right now. Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed their thereof. They drive away the ass of the fatherless. They take the, the, the widows of the oxen for a place. What he's saying here, just like he said over in Deuteronomy right here, they start removing the landmarks from the job and other things go awry. Problems start, it, 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 they, they, they start to happen and, and, and trouble starts to get worse and worse and worse. Do you not understand what we've lost over our time? I mentioned many times about that old back of the pickup truck ride. Have you ever heard of the back of the pickup truck, truck ride? Amen. You know the one thing you had to worry about in the back of the pickup truck? And it ain't falling out. Chewing the back. Chewing the back. <laughs> Matter of fact, a lot of us kids, we thought we were freckle face until one day we went and washed. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. Right? Hey, that's freedom. I ran from California to the state of Tennessee, praise God, in the back of a pickup truck. Amen. Amen. You say, well, what about me? You've got underpasses. We sat underneath an underpass for about 30 minutes since the rain passed, and away we went on down the road. Amen. Why? We had to get back home. Yeah. Nothing against California. I enjoyed my trip out there, but it sure was good getting home. Amen. Sure enough. Freedom! Living according. But now we're off the rails, and we don't understand what freedom is. Oh, we've got to have all these laws and regulations. 9 11. You know what 9 11 did? Took our freedom. Took our freedom. I'm going to get into all the other stuff. You research that for yourself. But I'm here to tell you, they can come around with something called the Patriot Act. That's not patriotism. Go back and learn the history. You might learn some things. You want real freedom? For a living according to But it starts with God. The Bible says. Any nation that forgets God, God forgets that nation. Yes. You want freedom? Then we've got to take it back to the Lord. Yes. We start removing things, Brother John. It's a little subtle things. <coughs> little subtle things. I think about that old servant, that devil, the one in Genesis chapter 3, where he was more subtle than any beast of the field. Came to Eve, and he subtly had a little scene in her head about, you know, hey, like God. All you have to do is eat this. No, God said, we're not to eat of it, nor touch it. God didn't say don't touch it. He said don't eat of it. Matter of fact, he told them to touch it because they had to purge it. Yeah. So already you lied. And when she said that little word right there, the old devil goes, I got it. Yeah. I got it. And he did. And she did. Here we are. Proverbs 22, 28 says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy father has set. I came here nearly five years ago to be pastor. One of the main conversations we had about me coming here and being your pastor was about this old book. So, preacher, what about the old KJV? You know, hey, uh, other translations are out there. What will you do? Well, I'm going to very plain and simple for everybody to understand. As long as I'm pastor of Faith Baptist Church, there is only one word. That's the KJV. Amen. Amen. That's the way it is. That's right. Not going to waver with anything else. Not going to put up with anything else. You know why? Because that's the <coughs> I've studied the history. Right. I've studied the history, and it's important to know your history. Yes. Amen. Like that flag right there. It's important to understand the value, the importance, the reasons why. You say, why, preacher? Proverbs 23. Go there with me. Proverbs 23 and verse number 9 says, Speak not in the ears of the fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark. And enter not in the fields of the fatherless. For their redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. A 
Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with a rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thy heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice even mine. You see, God business is a heart business. The reasons why in doing things, I remember as I was rearing my kids, bringing them up, one thing I tried to stress to them every time, the reason why I'm having to do this is so that I get a good boy, I get a good girl. I don't want you to misbehave. I don't want you to do things wrong. And you say, preacher, that's harsh. That's difficult. Yeah, it was on me. It was harsh and difficult. But I thank God for the kids I've got. And one thing about it, you go and you ask them when daddy's not around you, I guarantee you they'll tell you daddy loves them. Because the way I did it, Brother Ted, I did it with a heart. I want them to do what's right. I want them to be right. I want them to live up according to the word of God and what he says. Kind of reminds me of that old flag, doesn't it? Because the treasure that I cherish it, I want it to stand and be preserved, Brother John. I'll do what's needful and necessary. Go back with me to Genesis chapter number nine. We're passing some things on. We're having a reminis reminiscing. We're, we're, we're thinking about that old flag and what flies and the freedom that we have. Well, you can't talk about that and not talk about this. Genesis 9, verse number 8. God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. Thank God for that. Otherwise, it ended when his children died. But it carries on. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowls, of the, of the cattle, of, of every beast of the, of the earth with you, from all that are go, go out of the ark, to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you yes. and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. Meaning over and over and over and over, it won't stop. God's word is like that. It don't stop. Amen. It is forever. Amen. I do set my bow yes. in the cloud. It shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall, shall be seen in the cloud. Amen. I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it and that, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. God said unto Noah, This is a token of the covenant that which, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And God made his command or his commitment, if you will. And God has kept it. Now why would he make a commitment like that? And why would he destroy us in the first place? Why? Yes. I know there's a lot of talk today about the rainbow. Mm, sure. mm. Do you know how many legitimate colors are in the rainbow? That's right. How many red stripes are on that flag? Mm. I told you it's God's number. Yes. And there's seven in that flag, or in that, in that, uh, in that rainbow. But I saw something the other day, Brother John, where they're trying to add other colors to it. 
I hate to tell you, they made that an abomination. Kind of like that's for that plaque right there. But I'm also let you in a little secret. They put all the colors they want to on to that rainbow, and they ain't going to change God's meaning. When God established it with man, and by the way, I've never seen their acts. I've seen it on shirts, I've seen it on flags, I've seen it on all sorts of other little items that man buys and sells. But I've only seen it in the clouds by the hand of God. Think about that. That means we're limited. And what God is saying here about this flag, and what God is saying here about this rainbow, what God is saying about these markers, Brother John, it reminds us of some, of some things. Let's not forget why the rainbow and the flood and all that had to happen anyways. Genesis chapter 6, Lord. And it came to pass, when man began to multiply the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, and that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. That was Noah's time of building the ark, by the way. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the uh, uh, when they came in unto the daughters of men, they bare them children, children unto them. The same became mighty men, what true of old, men of renown. <coughs> Made them they to make a name for themselves. God said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. I want to ask the question before going any further. Does it not kind of sound like today? Yeah. How many of y'all remember childhood and the innocence and simplicity of childhood? These children are not experiencing that now. They're robbing their innocence. They're taking their childhood. That's a shame. By the way, God said it's better than a millstone be hung about your neck you cast into the sea that harm one of those little ones. Right. It ain't me that you've got to answer to. It's him. Let's yes. read on. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Back to the heart thing. The Lord said, I will destroy man from a uh, man whom I have created from the earth, from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping thing in the vows of the air where it repenteth me that I made them. I'm glad he didn't stop there. I'm glad he didn't stop there. Listen very carefully. Verse 8 is so important to us. That's why you're here. But God, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Miss Doris, it's ugly, it's awful outside, it's, it's terrible what's being done to children. Uh, these, these shows that they, they, they want to sit there and flash up in front of these kids that they ought not be seeing, they ought not be hearing about, but yet they're letting it happen in our streets and more and more we're seeing this come to pass. Yeah. And they've taken something that God has promised, man, that he wouldn't destroy the earth by water. And they're rubbing it in God's face saying, ha, 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 ha. He won't destroy it by water this time. No, this time it's going to be fire. Yep. Amen. Amen. Have y'all paying attention to that? Yep. Oh, it ain't starting in Canada. Canada's just one of the places. Oh, there's a lot you can give to your table today that you probably won't like. But I'm here to tell you, it's going to get worse. Yes. Don't get worse. Brother Rabbit's wife sent uh, a picture the other day about those fires up there. She's up in Michigan right now. Can't even hardly see outside right now. Yeah. But they're running around here with this little rainbow thing. And they're saying, ha, 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 ha. That's just a fool. God's not playing games here, brothers and sisters. Right. Right. 
You don't remove the old landmarks. Yes. You don't take away what God's established. Romans 5, verse number 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came by upon all men to the condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men of justification of God. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made sinners. But we're sinning. He's shown us our way out. When God makes a promise, He keeps His word. Amen. And He's not going to destroy this world anymore by water. <clears throat> he kept His word when He said He would send Himself a sacrifice. Yeah. And that too has a marker that I like to fall back on from time to time. Yes. Just like I turned to that old flag, Brother John, and I remember white flies, I turned to that cross. I remember white stands on the golf line. Yep. Yep. I placed the skull. Mount, Mount, Mount Carroll, Calvary. You see, there's things that we need to remember. There's things that we need to reminisce. There's things that we need to hope. There's things that we need to hold true to. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Why we do what we do? Because we know what's coming. We understand what's at stake. And the Bible tells me this, Brother John. He who when his souls is wise. Amen. It's why we do. Now over the time, we used to get around the campfire. We used to talk about what was and what is and what shall be and so on and so forth. And the campfire is a great place to remember why we have that plan. That's right. Right. Matter of fact, that song says, talks about the campfires. Right? The dudes and doubles. Right? But there's another song that we sing, and remember, it reminds us of why that cross stands on the hill. Why we have markers? On a hill, far away, good and old, rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the tear is confess for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged, old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the cross, the old rugged cross, and exchange it someday for a crown. I remember why that cross stands. I reminisce because it's still there. There are churches today that are taking that cross down. Oh, the toll! It served its time. And they start removing them. They ain't got crosses in churches now. But we do. And others, but not a lot. that used to have them. They don't have them there anymore. Same thing about the Bible. You know, that word of God that stood the test of time. No, you need a modern translation. Something that's not all funny, daddy, old like that old book is. So it doesn't surprise me, Brother John, that that old flag has come under attack. It served its time. Let's move on from it. Oh, republic. Who wants to be a republic? I sure don't want communism. Amen. Amen. Right. Hmm? Right. I know why I am what I am. It is my job, because I know why I am what I am, it's my job to pass that on to others and help them to find out who they are and why we are what we are. When I stand and I put my hand on my heart, there's a 
There's not a question. There's not any doubt. My allegiance to that flag and why my allegiance to that flag is so important. Yes. Right. There's no doubt the sacrifice that's been made. Mm -hmm. But when I stand and I look at that cross, there's no mystery. There's no doubt. What my Savior did and how he, how he had to give his life for me. Now it's my time, Brother John. I'm going to hold the flag high. I'm going to keep the cross right where it's at. Amen. Ms. Linda, we're not going to forget. We're going to continue to keep standing. Like George Washington said, the thing, and this is his words, that sets the American Christian apart from any other in the world is that he would rather die on his feet than live on his knees. When I bow, that's what I bow to. And I do that in reverence to the one that is above all. Amen. Lord, thank you for this day, for this time, for this opportunity. Speak to the hearts. Thy will be done in Christ's name. Amen. All standing, take a look, John. 207, that's going to hurt you, John. Come on, right there. Come on, right there. Come on, right there. Trump do his rally yet yesterday. Uh, you might look into that. 
Amen. There's more to that story. Right. People stood because they believed in freedom. David. I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Iwo Jima. Amen. That was Marines. Amen. This misses the prayer this morning. Yes, sir. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you for the one that brought it. Yes. We ask you, Lord, to touch everybody's heart. Give them a want-to attitude, Lord. Have to be in every way. We, we know that Without the flag, without you, Lord, that we would do nothing. And we just give you our honor, praise, Lord, for all you do for us. We ask you, Lord, to live in our hearts, make us strong, continue to help us, O oh Lord. We know that without the United States of America, all the other countries of the world wouldn't exist, Lord. We thank you so much for giving us the freedoms that we have. Lead God direct us, Lord, bring us back the next quarter hour. Give us what we pay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.